Introduction to Neural Networks with C-Sharp, Class 3, Part 2. Welcome to Part 2. In this part, you're going to see how to actually implement a Hopfield Neural Network using C-Sharp. I will show you the C-Sharp classes that are necessary to create a Hopfield Neural Network. And later parts of this class session will show you how to actually create a variety of examples that make use of the C-Sharp classes that we will demonstrate in this session. We will begin by showing you how the Hopfield Neural Network classes are actually constructed. The Hopfield Neural Networks is implemented entirely inside of the Hopfield Network class. You can see some of the methods and properties available from this class here. It is not essential that you understand the inner workings of all of these methods. You can simply call them and the appropriate matrix mathematics will be carried out on your behalf to implement what you desire with the Hopfield Neural Network. Here you can see two properties that you will use when interacting with this class. First is layer matrix, which gives you access to the matrix that the Hopfield Neural Network is using. The second is size, which tells you the size of the Hopfield Neural Network. This is the number of neurons that are contained in this network. The first method, present, is used to present a pattern to the Hopfield Neural Network. You pass it a Boolean pattern, and it returns a Boolean pattern. All bipolar conversions are done for you. Train is called to train for the specified pattern. First, let's see how to present a pattern to the Hopfield Neural Network. You can see the signature for the present method here. You pass in a Boolean array that is the pattern, and it returns a Boolean array that is the pattern that resulted from the Hopfield Neural Network. First, the present method creates an output buffer to hold the pattern that is going to be returned. This is the same length as the pattern that was passed in. You can see this array being allocated here. The input that was passed in is an array and its Boolean. Neither of those is acceptable. We would like to convert it into a matrix, and we would also like to convert it into bipolar. Here we create an input matrix. This input matrix holds a bipolar matrix version of the input data that was sent in. Here we see the bipolar utility being used to convert to bipolar. This method was covered in class session 2. Next, we want to loop over every one of the input neurons, which corresponds to a number in the pattern. This algorithm corresponds to the algorithm that we learned for recalling patterns from a Hopfield neural network in the first part of this course. The for loop will loop over every single element in the input array. Next, we obtain a column matrix for the specified neuron that we're currently working on. This will be the connection between the neuron corresponding to the input array and all of the other neurons that this input neuron is connected to. Next we transpose this column matrix so that it becomes a row matrix. This will allow us to easily take the dot product between this column matrix that we just obtained and the input data. Now that the column matrix is in the same orientation as the input matrix, we can take the dot product. This has the effect of multiplying the two matrices by each other element by element and summing the total. This results in a single number. The dot product is calculated for every input value that was received. This is the output of each of these neurons. There is one neuron for each input data. So we compare this dot product to make sure that we output the right value. If the dot product was calculated to be greater than zero, then we're going to return true. If the dot product was calculated to be less than zero, then we're going to return false. This allows us to basically convert the bipolar sort of output that was generated by the dot product function into a true or false value that's going to be returned by the Hopfield Neural Network. We like to communicate with Hopfield Neural Networks in true or false rather than bipolar. This description used a lot of matrix algorithms. You can review these in class session 2. Now that we've seen how to recall a pattern from the Hopfield Neural Network, 
it's time to see how to train the Hopfield neural network. This is done by calling the train method that you see here. The train method accepts a Boolean pattern that the Hopfield neural network will be trained for. The train method does not return anything. The train method will create a pattern that will be added to the weight matrix that allows the Hopfield neural network to recognize this pattern. If you want to train the neural network for more than one pattern, simply call the train method multiple times. We will now take a look inside of the train method and see how it processes the pattern and contributes to the weight matrix. This allows the Hopfield neural network to learn the new pattern that is being passed in. Just as when the pattern was presented for recognition, we also have to convert the input array into bipolar and also into a matrix. Here you can see we're creating a row matrix and also converting the bipolar to a double value. The training algorithm for the Hopfield neural network states that we should take the transposition of the pattern that we are training and multiply that transposition by the original pattern before the transposition. This is what we're doing. We are creating a transposition of the training pattern. Next, we multiply the matrix by its transposition, resulting in a third matrix. The Hopfield neural network has neurons that are connected to each other on a single layer. However, these neurons are not connected to themselves. Because of this, we need to set the connections on each of the neurons to themselves to zero. To do this, we're going to take the identity matrix. The identity matrix is essentially a diagonal that runs from the upper left to the bottom right corner of the matrix of ones. Here you can see we are taking the identity matrix. This identity matrix will then be subtracted from the matrix that we just produced. This resulting matrix is the contribution for the pattern to the training of the hop field. Adding this contribution matrix to the matrix that the hop field has already been trained for will result in this pattern being added to the hop field neural network. Here you can see the identity matrix being subtracted from the training contribution matrix that we just produced. Once this subtraction takes place, the diagonal that is formed by all of the neurons' connections to themselves is set to zero. It would have previously been set to one from the multiplication of the transposition. Then this contribution matrix is added to the existing weight matrix that the Hopfield neural network already had. This results in the Hopfield neural network being trained to recognize the pattern that was just passed into the training method. It is now ready to recall this method. This algorithm is based on what we learned in class section one, part one for this class session. If you would like to review how this algorithm works, please review part one of this class session. This concludes part two. In the next part, you will learn how to actually create a simple example that makes use of the Hopfield Neural Network classes that we created during this part. We hope you will continue with part three. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.